This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Ed Cox versus Weaver. You all are engaged, have been together three years, and I can't help but notice there's a 23-year age difference between you all. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Ed Cox, why have you brought your fiancé to court today? I put a lot into this relationship, and I believe that he is cheating on me. When um, we got together, I was waitressing. He was a man... He came in as our manager. We got along very well, everything in common. Then we started seeing each other, and then right after that, I started finding out a lot of things. And I believe that he's been cheating on me, possibly, since we've been together over three years ago. Let me ask Mr. Weaver. I mean, she feels that you all have been having problems since the beginning of your relationship. What are you here to prove today? I'm here to prove that I am innocent beyond a shadow of doubt, that I love her with all my heart. I want this to be a nice, happy, smooth, stable relationship. Okay, tell me what it's like in your home right now with her believing that you are cheating on her. At home, it's, it's, really, it's really nice. We, everything's civil. When I leave for work or if I go out to do something, then that's when... It, and come back home, that's when a problem starts. And, uh, so tell me what happens when you get back home. She'll start accusing me. At, she'll start questioning me what I was doing, where I was... Where, who I was with, uh, why was I gone for so long. And I have to constantly defend myself, like, keep a tab of every little thing I did a laundry list, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So, what's on the line if you should find out that Mr. Weaver is, in fact, cheating? If he's cheating, I mean, I don't have time for this. I've, I've already been in a relationship for 20 years. You know, I have kids. I put in everything into this relationship. I love him more than anything in the world. But I'm not gonna stay with him if I find out that he's cheating on me. I wanna know today. You, you talked about you met at work. Tell me about your first meeting and your first date. It was beautiful. I mean, one, another woman that worked there asked if I wanted to go with her to take him out for his birthday, that she was going to take him out for a couple drinks. And so we all went to a place down the street. We went out for a couple drinks. And the friend that I worked with, she left earlier, and um, we stayed. And we got into a conversation. We got very close. And I had kissed him on his cheek. And um, he's like, wow, he was a woman never kissed me. And I was like, yeah, right, okay. He goes, no, I've never been kissed by a woman in my entire life. I'm like, get out of here. He goes, never had a girlfriend, never been kissed. So from, on, from there, we still were working together. We started seeing each other more. We got into a relationship. He said he never had sex. Like, I was his first love ever. Anything. Okay, so Anything. you took his virginity? That's it. <laughs> All right, so, Mr. Weaver, you see this woman at work. Were you looking for a relationship? Were you looking for a relationship with an older woman? What happened is we started out as co-workers. Uh, we started to gradually know each... get to know each other over time, working with each other. Okay. And then, eventually, that friendship kind of just developed naturally into a relationship. I didn't question it. Uh, I didn't think anything of it because it just seemed so natural. It just happened. Exactly. All and right. She was your first yes. person you kissed. Yes, Your Honor. And she's the first person you made love to. Yes, Your Honor. What was that like? <laughs> well, what was that was, like? Well, I mean, it was scary. You were scared. It was scary. I I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I asked, I know that seemed really, yeah, but so I asked like? because I mean he was young with an experienced woman. She has children. So I was just like, okay, what was that? I mean, wait a minute. Everybody sitting here was thinking. <laughs> they were like, what was that like? I just asked a question nobody else could ask. And, and that's why we love you. And that's why you, you, you love me. You asked it. a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> so, not to embarrass you, but no, that's, that's a beautiful thing. You have found your young prince. Yes. You're in love. <laughs> yeah. You are sharing first experiences. He treats you yeah. like no man has treated you before. No, not... never. Why do you think he's cheating right now? His family loves us and they love us together. They've never seen him so happy. So, you know, 
So we go there to spend the night. But here is this girl that I've never seen before. The mother's explaining to me, well, she grew up with the, the kids and she's like part of the family and we're just helping her out. She's just gonna stay for a while. She was mean to me the whole day. She didn't talk to me or anything. And at night she just came in there and she just totally attacked me and beat me up in the house with the family. So you believe that this is a woman that Mr. Weaver was dating? Yes, and he had something to do with this girl. And there's no reason for her to attack me. We didn't know each other. I didn't have a problem with the family. She had nothing to do with that. She attacked me because there was something with him. We uh, were staying the night at my mother's house. This girl comes in. Uh, she starts complaining about we're leaving all our trash all over the place. And a fight broke out. They, they, started, they started trash talking to each other. And so I just jumped in front of the door, closed it, and like barricaded myself in between them so they couldn't get to each other. Uh, somehow I lost my grip, the door got loose, and they got into it when, uh, when the door opened. Okay, so did you ever have a relationship with this woman in the past? No, not at all. All right, so Ms. Adcox, <laughs> is there anybody else that you think that your boyfriend is sleeping with? Yes, there was another girl. She started working after us. And she's a very pretty, tall, younger girl. She's very flashy, always flirting with him. But she loves blondes. He's got a thing for them. They're all blonde, everybody I'm talking about. Like, we're working together, but he doesn't notice me anymore. He's constantly behind her, constantly helping her with everything. And then when he's behind the desk... Okay, let me ask... I want to ask him about this. This new coworker, <laughs> were you helping her? Were you ignoring your girlfriend? No, I was not ignoring her over this other coworker. She was new. It's my job to instruct the waitresses how to do their job, how to assist the customers. You know, when you work, and I know this, I've been waitressing forever, the work phone is for the workers, and her number ends up being in his no, cell phone, she, she would, and she's she calling my, him. No, no. And I caught him one day, and I'm no, like, who her, are you talking to? And he hangs up the phone right away, though, so I couldn't talk to her or anything. He goes, she called for you. I'm like, why is she calling for me on your cell phone? I don't even talk to her. We're not friends. No, she called for you. I'm serious. Give me your number. He takes it out of the workbook. Now I call her. She said, I wasn't calling for you. Okay, so doesn't it make sense that if he's the manager of the restaurant, mm -hmm. she's a new employee, he would be paying her more attention? Yes, but another thing, we went to the beach and he's with swingers, girl and a guy, and he's got them on the phone and they're messaging each other. Swingers. How do you know they were interested in him? Because I was standing next to him and they were talking to him and they asked him if, they, if he wanted to get together. When you say get together, what do you mean? I don't know what they're talking about. Do you want to get together and go out sometime? How do you make the jump from, do you all want to go out <laughs> to swinging? That's a huge leap. I mean, we meet people and they're like, hey, we ought to go out. They might get his number. I, I don't know. think they want to swing no, with my I husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could just tell what kind of people they were. And I just looked at him, like, shaking my head, like, more or less, like, you know what I'm saying, don't take their number, let's go. But later on, I found out he did, and they were messaging each other. Okay, and what were they messaging each other? The guy asked him, when are we getting together? To play golf, to go out for beers, know. to watch the game? I'm sure he knows. Why do you think there's something bad about that? Why was I... Cut, cut, Why did he lie to me? The, the light bulb just went off in my head. Why is okay, he lying? tell me, because I, you know, I want to sit back for this. Tell she, me. She told him not to take the number, and he did. So, right, and so right, that means lying. she thinks that he's doing something that he shouldn't do. But, he's a grown because, man. He can take somebody's number, a guy's number, if he wants to. But why is he lying? We're in a relationship for over three years. Why would he lie? That would wait, be wait, like wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Taking your number and then leaving and then telling him later on, I don't have his number, and then you messaging me later on saying, are we going out? Why is he lying? Why does he keep on lying? Why am I fighting these lies? Well, I think if he's trying to explain it, and this is what he gets when he's trying to explain it, I can see why he just said, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Mr. Weaver, what is this like for you? <laughs> I just know what it's like it for is, me. It's very <laughs> mentally taxing. All right. I work 12-hour shifts minimum. I commute two hours to work each way. 
So I have no time to even around. It takes you 45 minutes to get to work. My son just drove me to work the other day. That's another lie right there. For, it takes you 45 minutes to get to late. It, it could takes take an hour and a half in traffic, and I've been taking a train lately because our car's broken that's down. That's just now. We're and not even talking hours. about that. All right. Well, to get to the bottom of this, the court has ordered a full forensic investigation on Mr. Weaver's cell phone, and we have those results. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Gregory Evans into the courtroom? Yes. How are you, Mr. Evans? I'm fine. Yourself, yes. Your Honor. Good, good to see good. you. All right. You performed a full forensic investigation on Mr. Weaver's cell phone. Is that correct? Yes, I did, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Evans, did you find any interesting communications between Mr. Weaver and women? Yes, I did. I found a fairly recent explicit picture that the defendant had deleted off his phone. And the picture is faceless, but it's... Well, here, it speaks for itself. <laughs> oh. Uh, we are looking at a woman's uh, breasts. And this photo of a topless woman was found in Mr. Weaver's phone. <laughs> yes, it was. And it had been deleted? Yes, it had. Mr. Weaver, were those breasts on your phone that you deleted? <laughs> I don't. I don't feel like I recognize him. Okay. okay. Well, Ron, would you please hand him that photograph? Yeah, I don't have any, so that, I guess that wouldn't be mine. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So you recognize him now? I do. And whose breasts are those? Those are the plaintiffs. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, plaintiff, well, you sh <laughs> can you show that to her, please? <laughs> oh, shoot. Never mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, okay, he's saved on that one. Thank you, Ms. Adcock. <laughs> Mr. Evans, did you find anything else in Mr. Weaver's phone that raised your suspicion? I did, Your Honor. I really did. As I said, I did a full forensics investigation of the defendant's phone. That includes anything he deleted, such as pictures, videos, and text messages. Okay. That's how I came up with this real racy conversation between Mr. Weaver and a woman. All right, this is from Tim. It says, you're sexy. I love you so much, sexy. She responds, I love it when you make love to me. It's very sensual, sexy, hot, and loving. And Mr. Weaver responds, you're so sexy. <laughs> okay. You recover this in Mr. Weaver's phone. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Weaver? I know exactly what that is. That's actually a conversation between me and the plaintiff. We use, we use several different cell phones, and sometimes if one phone is off and another one's on, we have to switch out, and we might have a lot of, diff of these conversations. I don't even use that word, such well. <laughs> I don't even know how to spell it. That's, that's, that's one of our con conversations, that's word for word. That mine. sounds exactly like us. So, Ms. Akka, this is not you. You're not the woman who's shown in the text message. That's a no. How are you feeling? <sighs> Mr. Evans, this communication, was it with a woman named Babies? Yes, it was. <laughs> Is that what he calls you in your phone? Yeah. I never use the word sensual. I can't even say it or spell it. I'm not an idiot or stupid, but I'm, I just don't. I'm like, that's not my... You, you busted it out I... there, I mean. <laughs> All right. <laughs> to further investigate this matter, the court has engaged the services of licensed private investigator and polygraph examiner Kendall Scholl, who was a special agent to the FBI. Ron, can you please escort Mr. Scholl into the courtroom? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Shaw, how are you today? Great, Your Honor. Good to see you. Good to see you. You conducted a polygraph examination on Mr. Weaver, is that correct? I did, Your Honor. Mr. Weaver was asked, since March of 2014, have you had sexual intercourse with any woman other than Ms. Adcox? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? 
The lie detector determined he was being truthful. <sighs> All right, Ms. Adcox, if you want any chance of keeping this young man, Literally. you have got to lighten up. He says when he comes home, you start barraging him with questions. Where have you been? Why does it take you so long to get home? A man can't live like that. A woman can't live like that. If you keep looking for something, looking for something, mm -hmm. you're going to find something, and you're going to blow it out of proportion, and this is going to be a big mess. Yeah. This young man has told you, I love you, I want to be with you. I want peace and harmony in my home. That's what he wants. Make that for him. Yep. You all are dating. You're in a long-distance relationship. Uh, I noticed from the court papers there's a 15-year age difference. Uh, Miss Scott, you're a little older than Miss White. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And you all have postponed an engagement twice... Yes. ...because of cheating allegations, and this relationship's not going anywhere until those allegations are resolved. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. White, you've opened this case. Tell us why you're here. Because I think she's cheating on me with two different women. Oh! <laughs> two different women. Two different women. And I'm here today just to find out if it's true or not. All right. And it makes me feel real... Like, I'm nothing, my self-esteem be down, and I'm tired of it. All right, Miss Scott, I'm looking at the pain in her face. I'm looking at the tears in her eyes. What are you here to prove? I'm here to prove I'm, I'm not cheating on her. All right. Especially with two different women. One of is my... One of them is my family member. She's saying you cheat with a family member? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. It happens like that sometimes. OK. But, but you deny that. I guess I deny that. Yeah. You... Ain't no truth in that. With a family member or friendly. anybody else, you're not cheating at I'm all. I'm not cheating at all. Y'all too friendly. Y'all too friendly. Slapping butts, y'all too friendly. <laughs> too friendly. So, Miss White, if you find out that, in fact, Miss Scott is cheating with one or both women, is this relationship done? I guess it is. It's over. Have you been cheated on in the past? So many times. So many times. So, so that's where this just... pain is coming from. So you're like, this is the person I thought was gonna take me out of this. Yes, out of that. And she's dragging you and back lift to me it. up, lift my spirit up, lift me up to say that I'm special, that I mean something to somebody. You just don't understand. <laughs> it's okay. It's it not. really is. I'm nervous and it hurts. <laughs> He thought this was over. One to marry. Twice. Twice I engaged to her. Twice. And here you are, right here with us, sharing this pain with a person you thought was really going to care bring about you I up. I love her. I'm in love with her. Everything. And you just don't feel it coming back no, to you? No, not at all. Miss Scott, how do you feel about this? Right. No, what she's saying is untrue, OK? Like I, like I said, these are my, this is my family member. This, this girl got... This, when you this say girl this got, is not a blood... That's this is right. not a she blood relationship. This is not, right. it's not a blood, this not okay. a blood thing. Okay. She's just like my family. You understand not what I'm saying? Not slapping butts. I never slapped... I never in my life slapped that young lady on her butt. Not the way they take pictures never. and do what they do. Come no. On. I'm watching you two. I'm feeling the passion... And the tension. I love this lady. The tension. You love this lady. I want to be with her. You yes. want to be with her. How did you two meet? <laughs> At a fish fry at my family member house. Tell me about that. Tell me how uh, that happened. When she came in with my one of my family members and I saw her, glasses, dreads, I was like, huh, I want that. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> and I'm gonna get that. Did you get to I get her fish? The... <laughs> get... All righty then. <laughs> well, well, do tell. Well, 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 do tell. All right, Miss Scott, she says the fish was fried. That's right. What did it you like about her too. when you saw her? Her eyes, her lips. I call her Sweet Lips. That's what I named her. I named her <laughs> she's Sweet beautiful. Lips. Sweet right. Lips. She's beautiful. Right, she's a very beautiful individual. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? But I just can't deal with all the drama. You understand what I'm saying? I want to be with her. Yes, I want to be with her. We've been together for one year. You understand? A, a, a one month. You know what I'm saying? I want a, a long... I want us to be together. She lives in Virginia, New York. I live in Virginia. You know what I'm saying? I make yeah. sure I come down right. here, though. And, yeah, we come to see each other. You understand what I'm saying? Even when I'm at her house, you know what I'm saying? She accused me of everything. Did you be I... talking on the phone. Listen to me. A phone is a phone. You understand what I'm saying? I don't act on that. 
But, but here's it's the so thing. Hard. You believe that there are two women it's two that Miss Scott is involved with. Yes. Tell me about the first woman. Huh, Rihanna? I'm not sure. Yes, it's Rihanna, the younger lady. The younger woman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so the, we're gonna call woman number one <laughs> the younger woman. Uh-huh. Okay. She's in the life, too. All right. You know, the gay life. And I guess she wants some inspiration from her aunt, so-called aunt or whatever. And they just too, too, too rocky for me. Like, you know, she always calling, take me to the store, would you got, give me money for cigarettes, and they just too, too, too friendly for me. And this is the person that you me. claim is like a, a family member to you. Yes. But yes. it's not, it's not, it's not a blood, blood family member. Not a blood family, it's just she is a family member. Okay, and in your mind, our family members the way they don't do this. Slapping butts, Valentine's Day she left me for her. Tell me about Valentine's Day. She didn't know I was gonna propose to her. Okay. I told her, babe, it's Valentine's Day. Stay with me in New York City. She was like, no, I gotta babysit, watch her children. I'm like, what's more important? And you were tight about it. Yes, very tight, because she did it twice, in December, around Christmas. Okay. Okay, this is our first Christmas together, and you want to go and babysit somebody? Let her find babysitting on her own. All right. I'm not your children. All right, Ron, so what you... do you have there? I have two pictures, Your Honor. Okay, Ron, would you grab those for us, yes, please? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. What are these pictures that we're looking at? Just too friendly to me. She looks sneaky anyway. But how, That's who, nothing there. Look wh that who picture. took Come these on. pictures? Where'd you What's find them? Her, her, the, the, the niece uh -uh. took the, the pictures. Look, oh, why are you poking your lips out and all that? Listen. For what? All right, so the... And she looks sneaky like, mmm. <laughs> I've taken selfies with girlfriends, and we're both... I'm looking over her shoulder, she's looking over mine. You all are voguing. We voguing or whatever. <laughs> And, uh, and I, so I don't see why this would set you off. I just don't trust. Oh, come on. All right, Miss White. Yes. You got something else to say. You yes, got to... after the fact, how I got those pictures is because me and Rihanna was on FaceTime. I made okay. a mistake in FaceTime Rihanna. And she said, oh, my girl went and got me a pack of cigarettes like she always do. Then Malika came back Mr. and then said, Stop. why you face, why are you on um, I, um, Rihanna's phone? Didn't I tell you don't call? Because we about to do booty and I'm going to send you the video. So, yes, Ms. Scott, she did. is this true? Right, yes, no, she that's did. not true. That's when I said what happened was, was me what and the white girl. Was, Ms. White sent a picture to Rihanna of on her ex-girlfriend. I sure did. And talk my um and, and the ex-girlfriend texts me on my phone telling me that her and Erica is have that she's at Erica's house. So I told the young girl, I said, do me a favor, act like me and you are messing around. It wasn't even none of that. See, none, tip for tip. it wasn't none of that. Tip that's for before. Tip. So, so that's why she gave her this message that we're about to do something. Right, that's why she yeah. did that, because I told her to do that. So y'all just do stuff back and forth right, to, 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 to get revenge on each other. Right, this is you getting back at her, you getting back at her. I'm tired. It's crazy. This is not what love looks like. It doesn't. No. It doesn't. It doesn't. This is not this what is it looks like. like. There were two women. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about woman number two. Malika comes down to my New York apartment. She was in the shower. Phone was ringing off the hook. Um, you have a, a message from such and such, the, the woman. Such and such, such and such, going off. So she was in the shower. I went in the shower, gave her her phone. I said, Malika, who is this lady? Keep calling you. Oh, she's screaming. Oh, the lady, she, this is my friend. This is my uh, old friend that I met uh, years ago. And just the way she reacted. I, I knew something was wrong. I knew something was wrong. Okay. And I knew, I know and mostly all her friends and family, but this didn't sit right with And me. you confronted her and about it. Her she, she gave you an explanation. Woman, and you didn't buy it. I didn't buy it. Okay, Miss Scott. Who is this woman? <laughs> old friend of mine. One day I was coming down the stairs and, if, and she ran into me. She gave me a hug, a kiss on my face. You kissed on her. You she gave me a kiss. Hold on, hold on, hold on, She Ms. gave Scott. me a kiss on my face. You understand what I'm saying? Rather than, the yeah, I, I told Erica, I said, yeah, because me and you was going through some problems. So you yeah, kissed another woman? I, I said to her, yeah, I was texting the girl. You know I want to know. I did said, you put your okay, tongue in her so mouth? I got proof, Your Honor. Okay, Ron, she would you please get in that? the lady's mouth? Proof. They was texting. I want to see you. I want to see you and give you a kiss. And How did you like get me this? Too. The lady sent it on my phone. You get these texts from her. From her. From another woman. I'm sorry. I miss your call. I was asleep. I hope everything is well. Call me when you get this message, please. Then another one. GM, good morning. Hope everything is well with you. Call when you get. And then, good evening. I hope everything is well with you because heard your sexy voice in a minute. Mm -hmm. All right. That's so this is Wednesday, April 18th, Thursday, mm -hmm. April 19th, 
Friday. And that's so what we were going called, to do. Trying to you track her down. April her down. 17th was our anniversary. Oh. Was our first year anniversary, Your Honor. Can okay. you so on the day after right. your anniversary. Can you believe that? She's talking and texting another woman. All right, then we have another set of texts. And this involves the other woman. Hello, sexy. Mm -hmm. Been a little under the weather. Mm -hmm. And then you respond. Hope you feel better. I'm coming in NY Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, so I'm happy to read that. Looking forward to kissing you again. <laughs> and you say, okay. Me too. Yeah, that's not a kiss. That's not a kiss. So you did kiss this woman. I, did, I told her, yeah, I kissed on the face. Yes, I did. No, the woman said you, you know what? Hold, hold, hold up. Hold up. Right. Hold up. I've been kissed on the cheek many a time. Mm -hmm. It ain't something I look forward to. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, y'all. It ain't something Thank I look you. forward Thank to. You. To get some perspective on this, we wanted to hear from a person who has been in a same-sex relationship, a long-distance relationship. We're gonna hear from season seven of Bad Girls Club, Ms. Judy Jackson. <laughs> Ron, would you please just go in and read us, y'all? <laughs> Judy Jackson. Hi. You are currently in a same-sex, long-distance relationship. Is that right? Absolutely. So, have you been accused of cheating? I have cheated. But okay. I didn't take it as cheating because, you know, I'm hosting parties, I kiss people, I get paid for it. Right. So, I don't think it's cheating, it's just me doing my job. What kind of kisser? Because yeah. I've been at yeah, parties and we go, mm -mm, <laughs> oh, you know, cheat the cheat, but... No, uh, I put my tongue all up in it. Oh, oh. Well, there it is. See? And but you, so... you don't consider that cheating? You know, technically, it is cheating. What kind of advice would you give to our litigants? I understand where you're coming from. You gotta not be friends with people that you had a past with. There's no need for them anymore. You got a new girl, you know? Are you of the belief that if you are in contact with that past, texting with that past, texting with folks like, I miss you, I'm It you're leaves sexy, the door open. There it is. It leaves the door open. You gotta close it shut so no little thoughts can come back through. That's right. All right. Thank, Thank you very you much, so Ms. Jackson. Much. Good luck, you guys. Thank you. All right, I think we got enough evidence, Mr. Cutler. All right, what do we have? She believes that Miss Scott ran off with a younger woman to be with a younger woman on Valentine's Day. She's got text evidence indicating that not only does Miss Scott want to see another woman while she's in New York visiting her, but she's also kissed this woman and they're looking forward to kissing again. And based on all of this, and the fact that she has had a past of broken hearts. And I love she, her. And that she loves her. And she has said, I love her. I want, I to, be want her. to be with her. She wants to marry her. I mean... But well, she cannot do that. She get my feelings hurt and my self-esteem down. I can't live like that. She says she's not gonna do it. She <laughs> All right, love. That's what we uh, got. Now, Miss Scott, do you I realize what's at stake here? Do you love me? Yeah. Answer that question. Yeah, I love you. You know no, I love you. No, you don't. See, this is what I, this is what I go through. Mm. This is what I go through. Even but you don't show this it. This is what you I go through show before no love. other young I ladies. Do. Even before other young ladies came involved. You always question about my love. You can't keep doing and it. Show, you keep trying, trying, to, you keep trying to run me out the door. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm getting okay. tired All right. too. I'm getting tired of that, too. There is a lot of stake here. And because of that, this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will hear from certified polygraph examiner Patrick Coffey to determine, is she cheating? You know what, Miss Scott? You've been smiling quite a bit. And smiling at really inappropriate times. Mm -hmm. And my history here on this bench is when I see that, a lot of times it's the exact opposite mm -hmm. because you got something you hiding. I don't have nothing to hide. All right, so I'm gonna give you this chance All right. to speak your truth before Mr. Coffee does. Do you have something you need to tell Miss White? No, I don't. I have nothing to tell her because so none, none of this stuff is un it's un this stuff is untrue. All right, there it is. Mr. Coffey, you conducted a polygraph examination of Ms. Scott, is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. Ms. Scott was asked, during your relationship with Ms. White, have you had physical, sexual contact with any other woman? What was her response? Her response was no. What did the polygraph reveal? 
polygraph disclosed. What did the polygraph reveal? Polygraph disclosed. She was being truthful. Woo! <laughs> a minute since some litigants wore me out like you two have. <laughs> and the reason you have wore me out is you all don't listen to us. Y'all don't listen to each other. Y'all doing tit for tat. Mm -hmm. All of it. No. It is a hard no. What you need to do, you got two ears and one mouth. There's a reason. And the only thing you can close is your lips. Close them and use your ears. You, Miss Thing, you yeah. need to slow make, down. Slow down. Slow down. Give this woman a chance to love you like she right. wants to. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. She can, she can't get in. She can't get anywhere. I mean, it's like a buzzsaw. I mean, you're yeah, afraid. I you're mean, afraid to jump yeah. in. Yeah. Let her love you. Mm -hmm. If you want her to love you, let her love you. Thank you. Because you're gonna scare her away. Okay. You know. You gotta let go of the past. Whatever happened in the past with you being cheated on, you gotta let that go. You can't blame her for okay. everything that's happened to you in the past. You're right. Now, Ms. Cutler said you gotta close your mouth, you know, to make sure you can have a happy relationship. You gotta keep something else closed, too, to all other people except you two. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying, right? Did okay. Mr. Cutler just say it out loud? Yeah, he did. You all have known each other for 20 years. You've been together for five years. But this relationship is on hold right now because you believe Mr. Walls is cheating. Is that correct, Ms. Yes, Pastor? Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Walls, you know, how do you feel knowing that your relationship all depends on what happens here today to determine whether you're cheating or not? I'm okay. I'm not cheating. I'm here to prove that I'm not. So I think that everything is going to be fine after the results are back and, uh, you know, and she's finds out that I'm not. I haven't uh, told any lies. I haven't seen any other women. So, you know, that's my story. <laughs> you know, they can win it. So, Ms. Maston, tell us what's at stake here today. Well, Your Honor, um, I, I've been withholding sex from Mr. Walls for, for a few months now. Um, I kind of came up, come up with excuses when, when he tries and stuff, like I don't feel good or, or things like that. And are you doing this because you believe he's cheating? I do. I, I for so me... For me, just imagining Dave with some other woman is a real big turnoff for me. So I've been having problems with that. And so you've been saying what? When he approaches you, how do you deflect? Um, I, I don't feel good. I have a headache. Um, it's the time of the month. Anything. You're just pulling them all out. All of them. <laughs> all, all the all classics. The tricks. Yes, I got a headache. Yes, ma'am. All right. Mr. Walls, I mean, how has it felt you know, her withholding sex. Did you know she was withholding sex? Uh, yeah, uh, I just thought she was, uh, sick, you know, and, and I, I don't know. So you, you know, thought she was sick? It, it was, it was bad, you know. Whatever I, I excuse... Trying, whatever you know, excuse... It wasn't she, working. Whatever <laughs> excuse she gave you, you believed it at the time? No. No, I knew something was wrong. I, I just couldn't get it out or she'd never tell me. Okay. How long has it been that you all have not been intimate? Uh, it's a few months. More, more than three months? Yes. More than three That's months? That's a lie. Yes. That's a lie. Okay, you're saying it, it's been about three months. It's maybe. Uh, three months is probably even exaggerating a little. So. Are y'all in the same bedroom? Are y'all yeah, sleeping we, in the same bed? We are. We do. We sleep in the same bed. I just kind of keep my distance and um, come to find out... I That's did... a big bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we, 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 was ha we went from having sex a, a couple times a week when we first got together... Um, to not having any for, for maybe, maybe three months. I mean, how does it feel to be rejected? Do you love her? I mean, what That's are you feeling? It, it feels bad. It makes me feel really bad to be rejected, you know? And to be and constantly just pushed back. what's going back. on, what's going on. You, you, you're not feeling me anymore. What's going on? And she's, no, it's okay. I are saying... still attracted to me. And, and she's just saying, it's okay. Oh, uh, yes, I am. I just don't feel good. So, so now that you found out that the reason she was withholding wasn't because she just wasn't attracted to you or she wasn't feeling well. She was withholding sex from you because she thought you were cheating. Right. How does that make you feel? I don't know. I wasn't cheating. I mean, she's constantly accusing me of it, but I wasn't. I, ne I never have. I can't convince her any, 
of any difference. So, I mean, hopefully this test they did proves, you know, otherwise. It should. This has got to be pretty horrible for your household. What is it? Is your household cold now because you all are not together in that way? It, it's it's put it's put a, a strain on us. It, it really has. I um, love April. I always have, and I always will. You know, I hope we can work things out, continue our relationship. Yeah. How do you end up in my courtroom? How does this happen? What made you believe that he's cheating? D Dave ended up in the hospital and had to have surgery. He ended up laid up in the hospital for. Uh, like two months, and I I wouldn't come and visit Dave until after the visiting hours because I had to take care of things at home. So a after visiting, Wait, he's in the hospital for two months. Yeah. What happened? He had to have uh, surgery on his back, on his spine. His spine almost collapsed. Oh. Wow. Okay. Wow. Okay. So um, I go up after hours and and visit with him. And there was one particular day that stands out that a nurse, I, I just got in there and a nurse comes walking by the door and kind of backs up and looks over at me and said, I thought you just left. And then kind of looks at Dave like maybe she had said something wrong. Stuck her foot in her mouth, you know? Oh. Um, so that kind of, kind of was like, what was that about, you know? So, okay, wait, you come in and the nurse says to you, I thought you just left. And you're looking at her because you just got there. I just got there. So somebody just left. So something on your face. And so did she look at you crazy or did she look at she, him crazy? After she kind of said, I thought you just left. And then she looks immediately at Dave. And I don't know if I maybe missed a look from Dave to her or her to him or whatever. And then she says, wrong room and, and walks on. So I'm like, uh, there's okay. something not right. Mr. Walls, uh, who was it that just left your room right before Miss Masson got there? It was a family member, and I, I told her that. She knows that. She knew they were coming to see me. It was the only people that came to see that me was, was her and family that. members. That was it. I think he's lying. Did he you, tell you who the family member was? Yes. Do you resemble the family member? No. Is that a mistake that a reasonable nurse could have made? No. Not, no, I don't... Nothing like her. And no. this family member, you don't believe that's who came to visit Mr. Walsh? No, I believe she came, but I don't believe it was then. Okay, so you... A couple days before then. Ah, so you said, okay, if it was a family member, it wasn't the night in question. Exactly. So what have you experienced lately that makes you believe that you've gone from this suspicion, this thing that caught your eye, to something that's actually happening? Okay, so um, he's just now able to start getting back to work in the last few months. And okay. um, with my experience in him working before and now, is is a little different. Um, okay. He, he doesn't answer his cell phone while he's at work. He doesn't answer the phone calls that I call, doesn't answer text messages. And then, he, and then it's here lately, he's coming home later and later and later. You know, everybody has a cell phone on them while they're at work. Everybody. Well, let's find out from him, Mr. Walls. Why are you not answering your phone? Why I are you coming home later and later? I, I never take it with me. I'm up and down ladders. I'm on roofs. I, I don't take the phone. I've dropped a couple phones and broke them, and it cost me a bunch of money replacing them, so I don't take the phone out of the truck with me. I'd leave it there. She knows that. Okay. I don't answer the phone all day, and I won't, and I'm not going to. Okay, but let me ask you this. Is this different from that in the past? Did he take his phone? Did he answer? Did he answer calls and texts? When we first got together, he did. Okay, at some point he stopped. Was it after the surgery or before? Um, well, he had been out of work for a while, so I, I, I'm gonna guess I noticed it after the surgery. After the surgery. When he just surgery. went back to work. And that's one of those things people talk about. Either the person stops responding... Yeah. ...or they're responding, but it's never to me. It's, they're on the right. phone, but it's right. not with me. Right. Okay. Right. But, so, Mr. Walls, did we have this drastic change from before and after with your I, I answering the so. cell phone? I don't think so. I think she's exaggerating. I really do. I, I don't think there was no change at all. I've always left my phone in the truck. And, and since I broke a few of them and I had to replace them, I just left it there. And oh. she knows that. I would call her back when I got to the truck. Yeah. Now, that explains the phone. What about you coming home late? She says you're coming home well, late. Well, sometimes I got people's windows and doors out of their house. I got to get them back in there before I leave. You know, I just can't leave their house open all night. So a lot of times that's what I'm doing. I'm finishing up a job. I have to. You see, a lot of times. What about the other times? Because I think that's what Ms. Mass was concerned no about. There was other times. <laughs> well, and I think... What other times was there? So... Where are you and who are you with? That's huh? usually what he tells me. He's, he's, he can't leave people's houses open yeah, or their roof well, open yeah, yeah. or that's always what, that's always his, ex his excuse. I don't, I don't drink or anything like that. I don't go to bars. You know, I, when I leave the job, I go straight home. So you're or saying... Or sometimes I may go to a, a construction, you know, place to pick up supplies for the next day or something like that, you know, and then home. But I'm not going anywhere else. I'm not seeing anybody. Else. But the bottom line, Mr. Walls, is nothing's happening. You're just a working man. Right. 
and you're coming home or either taking care of business. Right. You know what, love? It, what I, but what I'm sensing is just a lack of communication between the two. Do you all talk to each other? What I, kind I, of... I question him when he when he finally does show up, come home. I question him, and he says, I, "I'm on his nerves. I, I'm accused." <laughs> you heard her answer, I, right? Yeah, I did. Look, <laughs> you asked, "Do you all talk?" She says, "I, said, I communi- question." No, do you all communicate? Right. Do you all talk? She I'm... says, "I question him when he comes home." There's a difference between communication and interrogation. Yeah. yeah. And and so if you're interrogating him. Yeah, you're getting answers, but you're not having the connection that's required for communication. Okay. And when you're communicating, you're like, love, I don't know what's going on. Talk to me about your work schedule. As opposed to, where you been? What you doing? <laughs> Why you late? That's right. a different flavor, right? Right. Okay. Because he's All going right. into shutdown mode yeah. at that point. And Immediately. That's exactly does. what he right. does. Right. So have you found anything that makes you think he's cheating? Okay, Your Honor, so we we share a car together and he takes it sometimes by himself and um, I found a hair tie in it. This hair tie, a big bulky hair tie. And that's not the kind that I use. I've never used. I use this kind. Okay. And you're trying to figure out whose tie is that? Where did it come from? It's not mine. It has nothing to do with me. I've never used that kind. I just don't. Mr. Walls, whose hair tie is that? I have no clue. The car was never cleaned out when we we bought it. I never cleaned the car out. So I, I don't know where it comes from. It's either under the seat, came out from under the seat. I, I don't know. And you, you don't need a hair tie looking no, at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that doesn't need a hair tie. <laughs> so when you asked him about it, what did he say? Just that. It, it had to have already been in the car. It's not nothing that he did. And, and you're I, just like, but that's just, just another layer. It's just all of a sudden there. Yeah. So, so have you discovered anything else that makes you believe that I there's a, uh, something amiss? I have. Okay. I have also found a little cheap fake nail... Oh. That was in the car. And as you can see, I have real nails. I don't use these cheap things. And so what did you say to Mr. Walls? Like, whose again, nail is this? Again, I take him, I take the nail to him. Where did this come from? And again, I have no idea. I've never seen it before. Okay, Mr. Walls, I, I might can give you the hair tie, but <laughs> come on, now you got fake nails in the car? Pop I mean, it up. Same thing. The car wasn't cleaned out. It, it had to been in there. It, it's not from any other woman. I, you know, but, but why all of a sudden? I mean, you all had the yeah. car for a while before these things we started appearing. We didn't have that long. We didn't have that car that long. But why? I never they... cleaned it out. I know she did. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I, I Mr. Cullen, I think we got enough right here. I think we got Hold enough. Hold on a second. Let me let me think about this. To think he's cheating on you now. How does that make you feel? It, it hurts. It doesn't feel good at all. Um, because he, he, he used to tell me all the time that he loves me. And, and we used to be real intimate. And we talked, communicated. I know a lot of it's me because I feel that he's cheating and I'm blocking a lot of it. But it doesn't feel good at all. I would love to find out that I'm completely wrong and, and get it back together. You need to have this block moved out of the way. Yes. So that you all can move forward. Yes, ma'am. And I guess, Mr. Walls, you, you got to feel the same way. If you say you're not cheating... Right. Yeah, I do. Yeah, every, every day, you know, I'm like, what's going on? Are you not attracted to me? Because he's not, you know, like it was in the beginning at, at all. So, yeah, I, I would like to get everything out in the open and move on and, and try to, you know, I love April. I want to stay with April. I'm 51 years old. There ain't another one. And, and you're trying to figure out how many different ways can I tell you I'm not cheating? It's right. got to be frustrating to you yeah, at some point, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. All right. Well, Mr. Cullen, I think we got a good idea what it's like in their household. You okay. got, I mean, it's, it's clear they're not communicating. She's not communicating because he's coming home late. She thinks he's doing something other than working. He's disappearing and won't answer his phone. She's found these women's uh, articles in, his, in the car, the scrunchie and the fake nail. So she's like, with all of these things happening, and they just recently started, for those reasons, she thinks he's cheating. And she's like, I can't continue this way. And he's equally frustrated, wanting to prove his innocence. Exactly. Well, this court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf to determine is he cheating. <laughs> Ron, <please> <laughs> step, Mr. Wolf. Guy Wolf. Good day, Mr. Wolf. How are you? I'm well, Your Honor. How about you? Doing well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. 
Would you explain, please, what forensic voice analysis is? Yes, sir. When you speak, you have AM and FM frequencies in your voice, like on a radio. And when you tell a lie, the FM frequency goes away. Forensic voice analysis works by measuring those frequencies. I can then look at a chart, and I can determine where somebody's being deceptive. And you conduct this examination by asking a person a series of questions, correct? Yes, sir. And you ask Mr. Walls a series of questions, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Let's take a look at the first question you asked him. Did the hair tie that was found in Ms. Maston's car belong to a woman with whom you've had physical sexual contact? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Let's take a look at the next question. Did the fake fingernail that was found in Miss Maston's car belong to a woman with whom you've had physical sexual contact? No. What did the voice forensic analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. Is that somewhat of a smile? It is, it is. That's a good sign. There was one more question, correct? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a look at that question. Since getting back together with Ms. Maston five years ago, have you had physical sexual contact with another woman? No. What did the forensic voice analysis determine? The forensic voice analysis determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. You look like you're about to cry. I am. It's okay. I'm so... How do how do you all feel knowing that this this I'm glad it's, impediment I'm glad it's is gone. Out in the open now she knows that, that I wasn't doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad we were here to help you with that. And Miss Maston, how are you feeling right now? Um, maybe this big because I accused him, but I'm I'm glad to uh to know the truth. I really am. Um, I miss him. I miss the way we used to be a lot. So I hope we can get back there. So I, <laughs> you won't have any more headaches anytime soon, will you? No, ma'am. No, All right. <laughs> no more excuses. No more excuses.